Let's move on. Let's turn now to education. Recently, there were hearings in Lansing over Common Core standards. Just a brief refresher for you. The Common Core is across the board learning standards adopted by 45 states across the country, including in Michigan. But this year, the legislature blocked funding for educators to implement Common Core. So what are the biggest holdups in this situation? Well, I think ultimately this will pass and they'll they'll get a, a deal done. There was some concern, rightfully so, um, that not with the standards. I think people accept the standards are uh, themselves are um, are a good They're thing. Completely and, innocuous. And mm -hmm. you know, it's this idea of more federal involvement um, in education on the heels of No Child Left Behind, which Michigan had to ask uh, for a waiver from. And you know, it seems. A, a legitimate concern that any time the federal government gets involved at this level of education, they make it more inefficient. It makes it more inefficient, do you agree with that? No, of course not. I mean, states have, first of all, Common Core is uh, the result of state superintendents all working together to come up with standards that they could agree on. All Common Core says is that a diploma that you get in the state of Michigan should be the same have the same value as a diploma you get in Florida or California or Alabama. And this is international it's also just, across just, the board. It's just basic standards in terms of what kids should know. And the standards uh, themselves are, are good. I mean, they are the right and standards. Nothing, and states have proven themselves in, unable to, to impose those standards on their own, which is why they all work together not true to come Michigan. up with federal standards. It's not true we don't Michigan. have those standards. Michigan de developed a very good core curriculum. Um, here, a very rigorous standards, hard fought, and, and I backed think away from them. The, the only fear here is the federal role, and you know it, it, it comes from experience. It, it doesn't come from experience. The, the, well, no child the, left behind was a disaster. No child left behind had problems, but it can was you equate better that though to before. every single program? And no, if you, the federal government has their hand on it, then therefore every program is going to be terrible. You can't necessarily equate it to that, but you can certainly be informed by. The past promises the federal government made about oh this prob this program is going to be innocuous and we're not going to meddle in your local decision making it never happened. Well, No Child Left Behind was never sold that way. No Child Left Behind was a, a pretty intrusive federal program, you know, authored work. authored by a Republican, uh, and mm -hmm. and it didn't work for a number of reasons that had nothing to do with the federal government. It, there there were there were systemic problems uh, from the beginning. This is a much sort of more uh, uh, laid back kind of approach to just saying, look, these are the standards. You meet them however you want to meet them. Yeah, you but, implement but your own You've got to make sure there's that nothing, the, and there's nothing to stop uniform. states from doing that themselves, and they should. They did. And this Michigan is what has. Common Core Okay, is. well, so if you say that you think eventually this is going to get done, because it hasn't gotten done yet, and we're at the end of July here, how does this put educators behind the ball a little bit come fall? They've been planning this for three years to, to transition to this uh, uh, curriculum this fall. Everything is in place to do it. The new teacher evaluation system has been geared toward uh, using this. Uh, and this, we are going to talk about board. that. Not a thing stopping districts from implementing it this fall. Not a sure thing. there is absolutely. absolutely. If the legislature not. doesn't do it, they can't. They're not supposed to do it. So, so now you're going to disrupt all of that planning, all of that preparation f for politics. When we see that from Washington, we, we get all uh, worked up. I'm not sure why it's acceptable from the state legislature. All right, well, let's talk about those teacher evaluations. The Michigan Council for Education Effectiveness has released recommendations for teacher evaluations in the state. In a few years, half of a teacher's evaluation would be on classroom practices and the other half on student growth through testing. And a teacher could be bounced after two years of ineffective ratings. This is really interesting, but this also doesn't take into account, critics would say, attendance or parental involvement. You're just evaluating. Well, it tries to. Things. I mean, I think they've come up with a pretty good plan and a pretty fair plan um, from a teacher's perspective on evaluating because they, they do factor in uh, the individual uh, challenges a child might might face. And so um, every child, they're not saying, well, a teacher's got to bring every child to the exact same place. Just got to show growth for every child. I think they've come up with a plan that's as fair as can be. My problem with, with it is it deals mostly with um, the ineffective teachers without providing much re reward for the really good teachers. And I think in the system, you have to reward the best teachers and keep them in the classroom. What do you think of these evaluations? Yeah, I, I think it's a uh, step in the right direction. Uh, Michigan is pretty far behind the best states uh, that, that have been doing this for, for some time. Places like Maryland and Massachusetts are way ahead of us, and they still will be even after we we get this done. Uh, Baltimore is a really good example of what Nolan was talking about. Uh, the, the 
the, the union contract there uh, includes performance measures and makes it makes it possible for teachers to earn up to a hundred and ten I think hundred fifteen thousand dollars based on their performance that's the direction we need to head uh, this doesn't quite get there but it does uh, it does start to say you know we need to keep track of how good teachers are get them help when they're not that good and when uh, when they uh, fail continuously we need to encourage them to go do something else. So if you're a teacher, this is going to be implemented, what, 15, 16, somewhere, somewhere no, along the line? Um, 14, 14, 15, 14, 14, 15. 14, 15. Okay, so if you're a teacher and you're seeing this, are you encouraged by this? Well, you should be. Are I you mean, excited by it? You should be because, look, you don't want to, if you're a teacher, you don't want to pick up a kid in the fifth grade who had a really lousy teacher in the fourth grade. I mean, they're putting you at a disadvantage. It's probably going to hit about 5% of teachers really hard in terms of the ones who shouldn't be in classrooms. And it's going to help others who are struggling get better. I don't know why anyone would object to that. It, it, there, there's provisions built in here to get people to where they need to be. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the idea is getting teachers Teachers who are struggling need help, and, and we don't do a good job with that. It's not always punitive. Uh, it is sometimes about improving performance in the classroom, which should be everybody's goal. All right, well, let's move on. You know, two school districts failed to meet the state's deadline this week to show they had enough money to keep school open this coming year. So what is the future of Buena Vista School District outside of Saginaw and also Inkster? So they had a week to come back and say, yes, we do have the money to be able to open up, and they did not meet get that it. threshold. And, and, you know, in the case of Buena Vista, it's a small district, dwindling um, student enrollment. It needed to be absorbed into its neighbors, and that's what will happen. Inkster's a little different story. I'm a little disappointed with Inkster a few years ago. Inkster was being held up as a model of a district um, Im improvement. They had a, a you know hot young superintendent who was moving performance, and then all of a sudden it went off the dock. Well, they ran you know into the same financial problems that Buena Vista did, yeah. uh, dwindling uh, population of students, and they just couldn't uh, they just couldn't survive. But that's another case where you know Mike Flanagan, the school superintendent, pointed it out in a plan he put on the table a few weeks ago. Is we got way too many school districts and all these these little individual school school district makes it harder to absorb fluctuations in enrollment and he's proposing countywide districts or a hybrid countywide system that makes all sorts of sense okay so it's these two school districts now I mean how many more school districts could be in this same well, boat you have, you have 55 statewide who are running budget deficits as of as of right now that could balloon significantly in the next in the next 12 months is is my understanding the, the truth is that that we either have to decide to pay for the school systems that we have or devise a new school system to pay for with the money that we have i mean we're, we're no longer at a, at a point where we can pretend that we're funding that we're properly funding schools uh, for the number of school districts that we have in this state. We are not. Well, we have too um, many school districts. Well, uh, I agree with that. I'm not sure there's any amount but not of money to make with this that. inefficient system work. And, well, it, you, you know, it worked you've for got a long some, time. Well, the, lots of things did. Detroit worked for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we've lost a lot of money. You've got to change. I mean, you've got some some communities with three and four school districts. Dearborn Heights, St. Yeah. Clair Shores. That makes absolutely be. no sense. Mm -hmm. But you also need a systematic way to, to dismantle that and not to do it on a crisis basis where you're just saying, well, you're out of money, you're going to well, shut well, down. Right. So have we had those conversations? I mean, well, are those... They're, they're are ongoing th now. I think that's why Flanagan wrote his letter to the legislature. you got study groups going on. I do think we're going to see some sort of state orchestrated consolidation of districts or at least consolidation of the management of districts and, and what's sometime over the next mm -hmm. couple what's years. What's unfortunate is that this is what it takes in Michigan to get us to that point. People have been talking about this for more than a decade, mm -hmm. that we had too many districts, we didn't have enough money, the system that we have for funding schools uh, is, is somewhat outdated at this point and and you got to figure it out. You either change the funding system or you change the system itself. And it, it's, it's not until kids are not going to school in May that we decide, yeah. oh, no. And I was we'll just going to say, and in 40 days, if I'm a parent with kids in either one of those districts, I'm wondering where in 40 days my kids yeah. are going, what kind of teachers I mean, do they the have, and where are they going to be. The real unfortunate thing about this is this will close schools in addition to districts. So kids in Inkster will have to travel who knows how far to other mm -hmm. places. If you consolidated the districts, you'd probably keep local schools 
open for those kids. Adds other, adds other logistical we have too, concerns. We might we have, have too many, many schools, schools too. Yeah. I mean, we don't That's have more the, of a debatable point. We don't have the population of students in this that state that we had when all these schools were built. All right, well, let's move on real quick here. Detroit Public Schools has a new emergency manager. Jack Martin is taking over for Roy Roberts. He recently was Detroit CFO and has worked for the U.S. Department of Education. So what has Jack Martin walked into? Well, I mean, Roy Roberts has left him in fairly decent shape. There's some still things, there's still some things that need to be done. Uh, Roberts has sort of locked him into this notion that student population is going to stabilize at, uh, I think, 55,000. I don't know if that's possible. Student population has been going down in rather steadily in Detroit for the last several years. Stabilizing it is going to be a big, a big challenge, but they base their budget and their projections on stabilization. I hope they're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, think? well, I mean, I think he's walking into an uncertain situation because, uh, you know, state leadership in Detroit public schools has not, in general, been that much better than what the locals were doing. I mean, this is now, uh, what, six years uh, of emergency management, uh, or f four years of emergency management, 15 years of state oversight mm -hmm. uh, in, in the last uh, couple of decades. I mean, I, I think someone's got to have a clearer vision for what they want to do with this school district. Uh, and I think that anything could be on the table in terms of, uh, you know, providing consistent uh, quality choices for parents across the city. And but that's we're the not big difference. Yet. Parents mm -hmm. have a lot more choices today they have than some they choices did right. before they state have some involvement. Choices, They've right. got a lot more got choices than choices. they had. Mm -hmm. And you have about half the parents in this city But you have a lot of parents who have, who have almost no choice. The public schools have to be an alternative, a quality alternative for, for parents, parents to be able to not. send their kids. Absolutely. All right.